this Honda Jazz as it sits right now is actually a free car. So here it is, the latest car to hit the yard. Now this one has actually come in in part exchange against that Honda CRV you saw me working on last time. This is, if you're not already aware, a Honda Jazz. So a very different car. But as I say, I took it in part exchange. It's not the sort of thing I'd normally deal with, but I'll explain why I've taken it and I'll show you around the car and a few of its quirks. This particular Jazz is a 2010. This is an EX spec. So I believe that's one of the higher spec examples. It's got uh, electric windows, uh, sunshine glass roof uh, with electric folding blind, electric windows all round, etc. So it's a fairly nice spec. Now this one being a 2010 has covered just 90,000 miles. So a little bit below average for the year. It's a really straight car, no damage to speak of. Drives really well. This is an automatic. So again, something that I wouldn't normally deal with. But being a Honda Jazz, I think having it in an automatic will actually help to sell it because the sort of people around here that will buy this, I think will prefer having it as an automatic. So good news for me. This is a 1.4 petrol, so it's the VTEC engine. Again, good news, small engine, cheap to run, low tax, etc. So being that this isn't the sort of car I would normally deal with, you might be asking yourself, why have I taken this in? Well, first of all, as I've mentioned, it did come in in part exchange. I'll always accept a part exchange if the car that's coming in is, is a straight, honest example, and it's, I feel it's something I can sell. This Honda Jazz is no exception. It's actually a really, really nice little thing. So here is why I have taken this little Jazz into stock. As I've said, it's not really the sort of thing I'd usually deal with, but it is a nice straight little car. But the real reason I've taken it, I took it in part exchange against that CRV. So this car came in plus some cash my way, essentially meaning that this Honda Jazz, as it sits right now, is actually a free car. It owes me absolutely nothing. The amount of money that came in on top of this Jazz paid for the CRV in terms of what it owed me for stock. So the CRV has gone, this Jazz has come in, I've had some cash as well. The CRV has paid for itself. This Jazz, as it sits right now, is essentially a free car. That's not to say it'll owe me absolutely nothing when it leaves, because I am going to put some work into it. There's no faults with it, it's a perfect little car, but obviously it needs a really, really good clean up inside and out. I'm going to put a full service on it, that means I'll send it out to a garage to be done, uh, just to keep the, the service book up to speed. I'm going to put a fresh MOT on it, it has got MOT for I think two or three months yet, but I will put a fresh one on it so that the new owner has uh, no concerns there. So a little bit of spending to do. Aside from the cleanup, um, which is pretty standard, there isn't really much to do. The headlights could definitely use a good polish. I'll do that before MOT, just so there's no argument with the, the tester on that front. Because you see they're slightly yellowed, they will be getting perfectly polished and be nice and bright again. There's a very small bit of bodywork to do on the underside of the front bumper, as you can see. Um, again, it's bread and butter stuff, it's not a problem, but a small amount of money will be spent on, on paintwork and materials to do that. So moving inside the Jazz, you can see it's totally original and complete. Nothing in here is broken or, or hugely damaged. The air con works, for instance, uh, the, all the electric windows work. There's that sunshine roof. It's got an electric blind, that all works. Uh, tinted windows in the rear, which I believe is a thing from the EX spec cars. I'm not an expert, so I could be wrong. The only bit of wear that I can identify is a little bit on the carpet just down here. Um, I'm not gonna change the carpet because of it but um, I will clean everything up because this car, although it's no reflection on the previous owner, it is a little bit dirty, but that's just the way these cars get after daily use. So that will be sorted out. I really can't complain about the interior. I think it's, uh, it's more than you could expect for a, a car of this age. It's, it's 13 years old after all, and it's done 90,000 miles, but it will be getting thoroughly cleaned. So again, some minor costs to go on the, the budget for that. Overall, I'm really, really happy with this little Jazz. It should hopefully be quite a quick turnaround. And I think, to be honest, it will sell quite quickly because in this part of the world, they do seem to be popular little cars. I can't see why it wouldn't sell. I'm not gonna overprice it. I'll see what the market dictates that it's worth when the work is complete. But as I say, it'll have a fresh MOT. It'll have a new service. It'll be looking sharp and ready to go. So I don't think it'll hang around for too long. There's no mechanical issues that I'm aware of. I've driven the car a little bit, can't identify anything. I will have the guys that do the service spend a little bit of time giving the car a full health check to make sure there is nothing outstanding. 
So the only slight gremlin I need to work on today is when you turn the ignition on, there's a bit of a buzz coming from the dash somewhere around here. I'm not totally sure what it is, but I will figure it out. But to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, when you turn the ignition on, this is the noise you're greeted with. Now, I don't think that's fuel pump because I can hear the fuel pump running separately. It sounds like some sort of relay buzz, I think. I'm not totally sure, but I will investigate that and have a look and get that sorted as well. But first things first, let's crack on and give this thing a really good clean and then drag it into the workshop and have a look at those other bits and pieces. Let's go. Okay, here's a bit of a turn up for the books. Obviously I've stripped the interior out, but I thought I'd just have a quick look and see if I can figure out what that buzzing noise is. As I said before, I think it was coming from the, the passenger footwell somewhere. But having put the ignition on and had a bit of a look around the car, I can actually say now that the, the buzzing is coming from the near side wing mirror. Now clearly that is a fault with the motor. So next job is to strip that down and see I can figure out why this thing is buzzing, what the noise is, and then we'll go from there. But uh, it's nice to pin it down, um, and it's not, not in the fuse box or anything weird like that. It is purely uh, a folding mirror motor, so let's figure it out. Right then, quick update on the buzzing wing mirror. As you can see, I've done a fair bit of stripping down. I've got the wing mirror in its various components. Can't fully separate it because the loom runs through the, the housing. But here's what I'm dealing with. This is the motor that's been running constantly and therefore making a buzzing sound. That motor engages with the pinion on the far right. Now you can see that shaft in the middle of this, that should have a nylon gear on it, a little, uh, it should have a little pinion gear on it. That was floating around inside there. It had broken in two. So I need to get a new pinion gear, mount it on that shaft, then that little spiral drive on the top right will be able to drive that pinion, therefore drive the shaft, drive the second worm drive, and we should have folding mirrors back and no more constant whirring noise. So a lot of messing around to get to a, a fairly simple fix. Uh, I've got to go away now and try and find one of those little pinions to fit on that shaft, then put all this mess back together and test it. But um, it's one of those fixes that I think most people would probably leave um, and just say nothing about it to the next buyer, but you know how I do things. If, if I know a problem exists, I, I have to fix it, otherwise I just can't sleep at night. So this is one of those very small fixes. It's taking a, a fair bit of time, but it really, uh, it, I think it warrants doing. So 
I'm going to interrupt the clean for a minute to go off and find one of those little pinions, get it mounted and get this, uh, this motor, etc. put back together and test those mirrors. On to the next bit. Okay, so that is that mirror now sorted. The innards have all been fixed and there is no annoying buzz when I turn the ignition on. And to prove my point, the folding mechanism now works exactly as it should. So that is great news. Sorted.
So just finished polishing those headlights. As you can see, they're not incredible, but it's a strange one. Some of this marring is actually on the inside of the lens, but having polished the outside as good as they need to be, I don't think it's gonna be an issue for MOT. Obviously they don't look brand new, but they're 10 times better than they were. So pretty happy with that. Next job I'm gonna tackle is this little bit of bumper damage down here. Again, it's not something you can really see when you're looking around the car at standing height, but it's something I know is there, so I want to get sorted properly. Um, so I'm going to crack on, get that blown in, sorted out, then that will be the exterior clean and the interior clean done. And then it'll be time for this little jazz to go off to have a new MOT and a service done on it, so it will be very much ready to find its new home. So I had a bit of a result with this front bumper. The damage was confined to the clear coat and it was minor enough that I was able to rectify it by simply flattening the area and repolishing it. The Jazz is now finished. I sent it in to have a full service carried out and also to have a new MOT put on it. This revealed that two tyres ideally needed changing, so now I have a full set of Falcons on the car. In addition to this, there was some brake fluctuation advised, so the rear caliper has been rebuilt and I'm happy to say that it passed its MOT with flying colours with no advisories. I advertised the car locally, and not surprisingly given the overall condition, history, spec and general brightness of the car, it sold very quickly. In fact, it sold to the first person who came to view it. If you've enjoyed seeing this car being turned around ready for sale, and want to see more videos like it, make sure you subscribe and also hit the like button. Thanks for watching.